products and they're <laughs> so many people commented like what you will get three minutes with selena and i was like <laughs> completely mind blanked wet and wowed I just dropped Selena. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be testing some new makeup. I've pretty much got a full face of all new things. And I'm also gonna be telling you a bit about me meeting Selena Gomez. If you don't follow me on Instagram and TikTok, you might not have seen that. There is gonna be a sort of behind the scenes vlog of that day coming soon. And also I actually got one of the production team to hold my vlog camera while I went and did my content with Selena. So I think I've got most of it on film and sort of like the behind the scenes thing. So there will be a vlog of that coming very soon. And I've also got the Rare Beauty lip products to test i've got the full collection they've launched lip liners and lipsticks i just want to say this video is not sponsored i was under no obligation to post any content from that day or to review the lip products on my channel but i was going to do it anyway because rare beauty is one of my favorite brands as of recently and uh, that's what i do on my channel i test new makeup so i guess we'll just get into it okay so i'm gonna start off with the refi face primer this is the glow and sculpt one there are so many brands at the moment that are creating amazing products and they're <laughs> They're either owned by celebrities or influencers. For example, Refi is owned by Jess Hunt. And this primer has got like a roller on it. So you're supposed to sort of like massage your face as you apply it, which I kind of love. But also most of the time I don't have time in the morning to be massaging my face as I do my makeup. <laughs> it feels very nice though. It's just like a plastic sort of roller. It's not like a cooling one or anything, but oh, this does feel nice. And then you just squeeze it if you want a bit more of the product to come out. Get right in those cheekbones. And then I'm just gonna rub that in. Oh, it feels quite sticky. I thought it would maybe feel a bit more serum-y, but it actually feels quite thick. It's definitely given my skin a glow. I think though, if you have oily skin, you might not be the biggest fan of that, but if you have dry skin, it feels very hydrating. So that's my primer done. Yeah, it feels thicker than I thought it would. Like it feels a little bit sort of like sticky almost. And then this, I actually posted a TikTok about this because I was browsing in Boots the other day for some new makeup and I saw these and it said new and I'm surprised that I have not seen a million L'Oreal ads on my TikTok about this. I'm sure they're coming soon. But this is the L'Oreal Age Perfect BB Cover Corrects and Cares BB Cream stuff. It's got SPF 50 and I got the shade 02 light beige. Oh my god, I've got a sticker stuck to the back of my leg. And I thought that maybe this would be a dupe for the It Cosmetics CC cream type of thing, but I was definitely wrong because I did already post a TikTok of this. It's a lot more runny as you can probably see and it's a very thin texture. And I've got to say, I wore this all day yesterday and I really really like it and side note this color light beige is perfect to match my tan so i'm just going to use the vive foundation brush to blend this in i usually prefer to use a brush when i'm using like cc creams and bb creams because i find that sometimes a sponge can absorb them a bit too much because they are a bit more of like a lighter weight texture but yeah can you see it's got really nice coverage and you don't need tons of product it blends really beautifully it's not it cosmetics level coverage but it's got just enough coverage that i would sort of need on a daily basis i just really like how it looks on my skin it's not too oily. It makes my skin look very glowy and sort of healthy and radiant. Okay, so next up, I've got two different concealers. This one, again, I picked up in Boots and it's the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. I didn't even realize that they had changed the concealers because um, I really liked the Maybelline Superstay Concealer that comes in the squeezy tube. That one's got really good coverage, but I don't know if this is the same thing, just repackaged or whether it's an entirely new concealer. Obviously, ages ago, they changed the Superstay Foundation to be this active wear one and it wasn't as good as the original. But this is the shade 10 and maybe the fact that people haven't spoken about it maybe it went downhill with the foundation who knows we'll see but i've also got this one from the body shop which is the vitamin c concealer and this is a new one i've got the shade light 1w it's also got glass packaging similar to their foundation so let's try one on either under eye i like the look of the applicator of this maybelline one it's super super teeny tiny oh it's a lot of thinner than I thought it would be. And I'm using one of the new Coco Cosmetics by Chloe sponges. These are like the Lucky Dip sponges where you, I think you just pay for a sponge and you get sent a random color. And if you find the black one, you get a hundred pound voucher, which is pretty sick. That blended really, really easily. And it feels like a very thin formula. It feels very lightweight, but it's not covered. It's only giving me a little bit of coverage. So maybe this being the active wear one, it's supposed to be less coverage, which I don't mind on a no makeup makeup day. Like I don't always want to be wearing a full coverage.
coverage concealer, but Maybelline Superstay Original Concealer was such good coverage, so I'm guessing... Well, this is definitely an entirely different formula. But you know what, though? It doesn't feel heavy under my eye at all. It feels really nice. Hmm. The Original Superstay Concealer is really thick. This one's really thin, which I quite like, but it doesn't give the coverage that I would want if I'm doing, like, full glam. But I will definitely keep this and use it on days where I'm not doing full glam. So let's try the Body Shop's Vitamin C. Oh crap. Oh, it's got an aluminium cap and a glass tube, which means I'm guessing a lot easier to recycle, which is awesome. This one's got a tiny cute little triangular dofer. I like the look of that. Ooh, this one also feels quite thin, but it's definitely thicker than the Maybelline one. Also, the Coco Cosmetics by Chloe have changed the texture of the sponges to all be the same texture as, I think it was shape one or shape two, whichever the one that was like the oval shaped, the like circular shaped sponge, they're now all the same texture as that one. So this shape has changed to match that texture, which at first I was like, oh no, I loved my marshmallow, like the original texture of it. But I mean, this is still so soft and squishy. That concealer also blended beautifully and feels really nice and lightweight. I'm just gonna add a bit more of this one to both sides. And then, oh, it does actually kind of smell like oranges. Let's see how well it covers like blemishes and stuff. The texture feels really nice. It's really light and sort of like almost a bit moussey feeling. Oh yeah, both of these have just blended like a dream. But also both of them, I would say, don't give full, full coverage. This one's got more coverage in the Maybelline though. So I guess I will start explaining the whole Selena Gomez situation story because I know that so many people commented like, what? And were very, very shocked by it, as was I when I got the email a couple of weeks ago. So I've got quite a busy week this week and um, most of the events that I was invited to, I said to my manager like, oh, I'm probably gonna be quite busy that week. So um, I'm not gonna go to them. And then he sent me this email and he was like, oh, I've just sent you the invite to an event with Rare Beauty. And I was like, oh, okay, I love Rare Beauty. Check my email. And he just said, I know you're busy that week, but this one might be worth going to, question mark. And I read the email and it said, Rare Beauty, Selena Gomez invites you to celebrate their Kind Words lip collection. And I was like, oh, fun. Like I'd been invited to a couple of Rare Beauty events before, but I hadn't been able to make them. And then I read the email and I read it through and then I sort of like skim read it. And then I got to the bit where it said, you will get three minutes with Selena. Please send over your content idea. And I was like, what? Hmm? You know what? I actually was filming at the time that I read the email. I will insert a clip of my reaction here. I think I was literally just like, what? And then I had to sit there for about 10 minutes and calm down. And I was just sitting there reading it like, what? What? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just got invited to the coolest event I've ever been invited to in my life. <laughs> Oh my god, what the fuck? Okay. I need to calm down and pretend like nothing just happened. Okay, let me just... Let's try a bit of the Maybelline on my blemishes and see if it does a better job. But yeah, so Selena was doing a bit of a kind of world tour, press tour for Rare Beauty and the launch of the Kind Words lip products. And I'd seen that she was doing a few similar type of events in America and in Europe. I think she was in Germany, France, Italy, LA, and then obviously she came to London. And this was all in the space of like two weeks. And I was one of the extremely lucky people that was invited to go early and film a piece of content with Selena. And we each got three minutes with her because there was a few different people that she had to get to in the space of an hour. And so I put my idea across that I wanted her to just sort of like pop into frame while I was doing my lipstick and be like, oh, I love your lip color. Like, what are you wearing? Because I thought that would be quite funny to do. But then as soon as I sent that idea, I was like, why did I pick that idea? Because now I actually have to talk and try and not mess up my words out of nerves because most people are just chosen like a viral TikTok audio to do a thing to or like singing along to one of her song lyrics. And you know what I really did want to do? If it had been appropriate, I would have really liked her to do the, what's that? A hat, crazy funky junky hat from Wizards of Waverly Place. But I thought, you know what? She's probably been asked to do that about 7,000 times and she's probably sick to death of it. And also that doesn't really have anything to do with her lip products. <laughs> but that was the first thing that came to my head because I used to love Wizards of Waverly Place when I was a kid. It's just absolutely mad because I grew up watching Selena on Disney Channel and still watching her now like Only Murders in the Building. I did an ad with Disney Plus last summer when that first came out and I said in that video like oh I love anything that Selena's in. I've always bought her albums and listened to her music and the fact that you know I got invited 
and had the opportunity to meet her was so special and probably one of the most exciting things that I've ever done in my whole career. And I know that she's just a person and that she's just a human being and I said this um, in my TikTok that I filmed and in my vlog, but you know, just to meet somebody that you've looked up to for so much of your life and someone that I find so inspiring, like also as well, like with her beauty brand, Rare Beauty, she's absolutely killing it. It's such a good brand. So yeah, it was just a really, really special moment. Anyway, I'm gonna um, get some more makeup out and I'll continue the story. I don't have a new cream bronzer to test, but I do have a new cream blush, so I'm just gonna use this Charlotte Tilbury one. It's the Beautiful Skin Sun-Kissed Sun Glow Bronzer in One Fair Pale. So I'll just dip my brush into there. Um, so obviously, like, the, the week leading up to the event, I had this sort of, like, nervous, sicky anxiety feeling the whole time, and also as well, because we all had to do a COVID test before we went, like, on the morning of the event, I was terrified that I was gonna catch COVID before I went, even though I've had it already, sort of, like, semi-recently, and I'm triple jabbed, like, it's unlikely that I was gonna get it again so quickly, but because, like, so many people have got it at the moment, and I kept seeing on the news how, like, one in 25 people have got COVID, I was like, if I catch COVID and then can't go and meet Selena, I would be devastated. And so taking that COVID test on the morning, I was like, oh, please be negative, please be negative. Thank God it was, so I was able to go. But I was just so nervous. Um, and you know what? I'd planned in my head sort of like what I was gonna say to her. And I really wanted to tell her all of these things about how like I've grown up watching her and listening to her music and I think she's an incredible role model and how her beauty brand is amazing and then I got to my time slot where I had to go and get my content and there was literally like to keep to the strict timings because obviously she's so busy and needs to sort of like get through everyone there was literally somebody standing there with a big timer on an iPad and like the second you cross the line they would press go so I was thinking crap, I need to get my content done because if I spend the whole minute, three minutes chatting to her, I'm not gonna get to do my TikTok. And I thought, because I have to bloody speak in my TikTok, what if I mess it up multiple times and I have to like keep redoing it? And so I just went straight in there and completely mind blank, didn't say anything that I wanted to say to her. I just obviously said like, hi, like it's so nice to meet you. She was like, oh, sorry, like I'm a bit sweaty. I was like, same, so am I, it's really hot. And we spoke about that a bit. And then I explained my content idea to her um, and then I sort of like went to set up my phone and everything and then once we'd done the content and like taken a couple pictures I then just said to her like I hope you're okay like are you okay because I know that you've been doing so many of these you must be so tired and she was like I'm okay like I'm I'll, I'll survive because she actually had food poisoning at the time which I didn't realize until after I'd sort of done my content with her so the fact that she had food poisoning and she'd met so many people over the course of like the past week or two she'd done so much traveling she was literally she in Italy the day before and flew into London that morning but even though all of those factors were a thing she still kept a smile on her face she still met everybody she was still so like professional and she's just so sweet she was so sweet and once I'd finished my content like I, I messed up the first one and was like would we be able to do it again like can we do another take and she was like whatever you want darling and then when I was done she was like thank you darling she was so sweet and she seemed like she genuinely appreciated everyone being there. And even though like she was ill, she still showed up and she still did it. And I think that that is very admirable because she easily could have canceled for the sake of her own health. Okay, so for my cream blush, I'm gonna take one of these. These are the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blushes. I'm gonna take the shade Corsica, which looks like Oh, that looks like a bit of me. More pigmented than I thought it would be. And you know what? On that day, I had a yellow dress that I so nearly wore that was actually really similar to Selena's dress. And I kind of wish that I had worn it so that we would have been matching. <laughs> Given the fact she had food poisoning and probably a major lack of sleep, she looked incredible. Her makeup looked flawless. And I actually posted, oh, this is very sheer. I would definitely add a bit more. I actually posted on my story how her makeup looked incredible and that um, Hung Van Gogh came with her. He traveled with her to London and did her makeup for all of these events. And I think he's an incredible makeup artist. And I said in my stories, like I was admiring Hung's work because Selena's makeup looks so flawless. And he actually replied back to me and was like, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say because she was feeling really ill. We did her makeup in 20 minutes. And I was like, well, that's the best 20 minute makeup I've ever seen in my life because she looked incredible. This is definitely more sheer than I thought it was gonna be. Like on my hand, I thought it was really pigmented, but then when you blend it out, it's quite sheer. But it feels very, very light. It feels almost like watery. It's a pretty color, but I'm not too sure about the, the formula. But I think if you had no makeup on and you wanted to add a bit of blush, that would be really nice. But for me, like it's not really my, 
not really my thing, but that's all right. Not everything's gonna work for me, is it? I think it's taking off a bit of my base makeup. Hmm. I have to fix it. I've got a couple of options for powder. I've got the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Clarifying Finishing Powder, which is a translucent one. So I'm gonna use that under my eyes. Then I've also got two powder foundations. This first one is from Kiko. It's the Matte Fusion Powder Foundation. No, Matte Fusion Press Powder. I got the shade 01. And then also this, which is the Inica Cosmetics. This is a Australian brand, I believe. And this is the Baked Mineral Foundation. And this is the shade Unity N2. It's the Inica Organic brand. This looks really nice actually i've got a bronzer from them in a sec but first let's use the wet and wild one so basically what happened is those of us that were there to do some content we did our shots with selena and then she did a little speech and and then everyone else arrived and then she went and took a little break and then she came back and did some photos in front of like this big board um where everyone else could sort of like go in and get their picture taken so i did get a second picture with her so let's try this wet and wild Wet and wild wet and wild powder um but yeah for the rest of the event i basically hung out with Robert <laughs> and we went and chatted to some people. Also before the event, I met up with some lovely girls from Instagram, Isabel Kate, who I've followed for ages. And we've sort of like spoken on Instagram and she posted on her close friend's story that she was going to this rare beauty event. And so she said, did I want to meet beforehand? And so we ended up meeting. So it was Isabel, we met up with a girl called Alice, who's another Instagrammer, she's incredible. Another girl called Linny, who is so cool. She's got like blue hair at the front and she's absolutely beautiful. So I met a few new people. And then as we were on our way to grab a drink before the event, because we'd got there a little bit early. We then bumped into Twee, who had literally just got out of a cab, Twee Lee, and I haven't seen Twee in years, so it was nice to catch up with her, and then we all went for a drink beforehand to sort of calm our nerves. That powder's done a really good job at setting my under eyes. They feel really smooth. Let's then go in with the Kiko powder to set one side of my face. Okay. It doesn't really have coverage, it's just sort of setting it, but that's fine. It doesn't say that it's a foundation or anything yeah it's a nice powder it doesn't feel too thick sometimes pressed powders can feel like really heavy but no that's pretty nice and then on the other side of my face i'm gonna take the inica inica powder foundation this also feels really nice again it's quite lightweight it definitely adds a little bit of coverage but not crazy amounts um but overall the event was so lovely i also got to meet the girls from space nk which is obviously where rare beauty is sold in the uk also got to meet the us rare beauty team who were really lovely and overall it was just an incredible experience and i feel like the luckiest person in the world to have been invited to that and i will never ever forget that day like it was just it was so cool definitely one of the coolest things that i've ever done since doing youtube when i went to take the pictures with selena i was literally shaking <laughs> But it was so worth the nerves because she was absolutely lovely. And yeah, that's that. So I've then got this, which is by the same brand and it's the Baked Mineral Bronzer. This is the shade Sunbeam. We know I love a baked bronzer. This is what the packaging looks like. And then it just opens up like this. Doesn't smell of anything, but that's fine. It looks really nice. I love a baked bronzer because usually they've got a tiny hint of sheen in them. Oh, it's very pigmented. Very pigmented, but it's really nice. I've put a bit much on my cheeks, haven't I? <laughs> okay, I dipped my brush in too much at the beginning. You definitely don't need a lot of this, but it blends beautifully. It just looks very smooth. No sparkles or anything. I would say it's got almost like a bit of a satin finish. Just be careful though, because it is quite pigmented. I'm gonna put a tiny little bit on my nose. And I've just realized as well, they do also have a blush. This is in the shade Pink Tickle, which looks like this. It's quite light and it's got two shades in it. I think that they're gonna be a bit too light for me, but we'll give it a try. I'm just gonna mix them both together. It is definitely showing up, but they are quite light. Hmm, you know what? It's showing up more than I thought it would. It is pretty. Wow, yeah, the more you layer it, you can definitely see it. Now I've probably put too much on. I'm just gonna take a bit more of this Kiko powder and see if I can sort of carve that out a bit. The blush has given me a very subtle bit of glow, but nothing crazy. So I'm gonna use this one from Kiko, which is the Ultimate Glow Highlighter. And look at this. It looks like they're like water eyeshadows or whatever they were called. So I'm quite excited to test it. <gasps> oh, did I say this is the shade 01? Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Okay, what? What? That is so stunning. It's another one of those type of highlighters that sort of like melts into your skin. Not quite as much as the half magic one that I tried the other day, but can you see how 
it's just sort of like giving me reflection rather than like chunky glitter. Put a little bit down my nose. I don't actually have any new eyebrow products to test. This is the Authored Beauty Brow Gel in the shade 2, Mid Brown. I really, really love this stuff. It reminds me of a lot of the Glossier Boy Brow. It's got like that waxy sort of texture, but it gives a bit of tint as well. And it's actually a Tanya Burr's makeup brand blast from the past. Their mascara is really good as well. And then I'm just gonna use a bit of the Anastasia brow pen, which is good, but it's just got nothing on the NYX one. Oh, and I've got the shade Soft Brown. If NYX ever discontinue their brow pen, I will riot. I think my brows look a bit too blocky now. So for my eyeshadow, I got sent this, which is the Milani Gilded Flora eyeshadow palette. This looks really stunning, actually. There's yellows, there's lavenders, and there's neutrals. I think I might do a bit of a yellow and purple look today. So I'm gonna take the shade Orchid, which is this one, and I'm just gonna put this on the outer and inner parts of my eye. And I'm just gonna pack it on first and then I'll blend it out. So I just wanna put that here on the inner corner and the outer corner. Bearing in mind I'm just doing this over the top of concealer. It's really pigmented. It's coming out really nicely. Then I'm gonna take the yellow, which is called What's Up Buttercup. I'm gonna put a bit of yellow in the center of my lid, which might seem weird, but I'm hoping it will all come together. Again, that's really pigmented, considering it's a very pale yellow. And I'm doing it over the top of concealer that I've already set with powder. That's impressive. Those, those shades are beautiful. And then I'm going to take the shade Lavender Fields, which is this one, and I'm just going to use that to blend sort of out the edges of this purple colour. It's kind of mixed with that shade and made a slightly lighter purple, but that's fine by me. And I'm just blending this shade up towards my brow bone. I think I will go back in with a bit of the darker purple, just to try and blend those two shades together a bit more, because at the moment they're a bit sort of separate. So far, I'm really happy with these eyeshadows. The names are so cute as well. This one is called Busy Bee, which actually, Busy Bee, Bouquet, <gasps> Petal to the Metal, and Botanist, that was those four shimmers. They look really nice. I'm gonna take Busy Bee, which is this one. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Let's take the shade Bouquet, which is like this pinky gold color. And I'm gonna put that just there. Okay, it doesn't want to stick because it's matte. As in like, I'm applying it over the top of matte eyeshadows. Hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit of this, which is the e.l.f. Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Mist. Not so sure about the whole blue light thing. While we're here, let's do an eyeshadow test. Taking that purple shimmer. I'm gonna put it just there and then we'll come back to that. But I'm just gonna spritz my brush and then take the pink eyeshadow. Oh no. Okay, wait, I think it will almost work better if I paint on a little bit of like setting spray to give something for it to stick to and then go in with my finger maybe. Uh, that's kind of working. I just think those shimmers don't like going over the top of a matte eyeshadow, which is completely fair enough. Like they need something to stick onto. Let's then take Busy Bee, the yellow, put this on the center. This one's just more pigmented in general. Yeah, that yellow shimmer is just more pigmented, I think. And then lastly, I'm just gonna go back in once again with that matte purple color and just sort of blend over the edges of everything. It is a pretty palette, but I don't know how often I would reach for it. But if you like your purples and yellows, it is nice. I'm just gonna take those same purple colors along my lower lash line. And let's actually take a bit of this purple shimmer on my lower lash line as well. And then I'm gonna take this shade, which is called Botanist, and put that on my inner corners. Let me do the setting spray test of this eyeshadow. Okay, it's not actually kept it there. Should I try a matte eyeshadow instead? Let's try the brown from here, which, wow, the brown is actually really pigmented. I'm gonna try that one instead, because I feel like the shimmer was sort of like sitting on top of my skin and it was a bit, oh crap, I put too much and that was dripping down my arm. Oh no! For my liner, I have the new one from Vive. This is their Power Ink Liner, and I did actually get an ad for this the other day, and it looks incredible. This is the packaging. This is what the nib looks like. I did actually see Jamie the other day at the Rare Beauty event and she was like have you tried the eyeliner i was like no i haven't tried it yet and she was like it's incredible <laughs> even though like it's her own brand she was like it's incredible you need to try it so it has a very similar nib to like the kvd oh wow it's very black the kvd liner so let's give it a try i've just brought that all the way into my inner corner and the nib is so skinny that you can do that really easily wow she was not lying you can get a 
very, very precise wing with this. Also, I think it's smudge proof. It's such a skinny little nib, which is great. Okay, wow. It makes me want to do a whole load of like creative stuff and just start like drawing all over my eyes with it. <laughs> she was not lying. This is a great eyeliner. It's very, very similar to the KVD one, but I would say actually the nib on this is a little bit thinner, so you can get like a bit more of a precise wing. Let's now test this. Ah, yes, yeah, see on the matte eyeshadow, it is staying completely put, which that reminds me while we're here. So I have this as well, which is the new Milani mascara. It's called the highly rated anti-gravity mascara. This is what the packaging looks like. And the brush looks lethal. <laughs> uh, I'm quite scared of it. It looks really spiky. It's a plastic brush. It's a very interesting shaped brush because it's kind of difficult to get to your inner corners because the end of it is like a big bulging thing. <laughs> and it's quite a dry formula, which is quite a good thing actually because then it gives a bit more volume. It's decent. It's decent. I think it would actually be even better if they'd made the brush tapered to a point so that you can really get in your lower lashes. Then I think it would be a really good mascara. But yeah, the end of it makes it a bit difficult to get all the way to the smaller lashes. It's doing a pretty good job. I think it's made my lashes look pretty good. It worked really well on my lower lashes actually. So these are the eyes without lashes, but I am gonna stick on some lashes today. I've got two pairs to choose from from Kiss and I don't know which ones to go for. These are the Veil lashes, the Naked Drama ones, and then I've also got the Royal Silk Lux Extensions. Uh, these ones look a bit more fluttery actually, I might go for these. Oh, and I'm gonna use this, which is their Lash Glue Liner. These are very flexible. Um, I think I will need to trim them down a little bit though. I'm just gonna trim off the ends from the outer corner and I'm just gonna trace over my liner. I'm gonna do two coats and then, oh, I don't have my little lash tweezers. I guess I'll just try and stick it on with my fingernails. Are we on? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I need to use these kind of lash pens more often because that was so much easier. Oh, oops. That one, I've like stuck it. It's like pulled my eyeliner down a little bit because of the way that I've stuck it onto my skin. No stress. Okay, I just went over it with a bit more liner. These lashes are super pretty and I feel like they go with the look really nicely because they're quite sort of fluttery and wispy looking. I really like how the eyes have turned out. Okay, so finally we move on to the lip products and I have got this gorgeous box of Selena's face. I'm also watching the new season of Only Murders in the Building at the moment. I need to catch up because I haven't watched the most recent episode um, because they add one each week on Disney Plus. But like now when I watch it, I'm going to watch it and be like, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to me. So these are what the lip products look like. There's the Kind Words lip liners and the lipsticks. The one that I wore on the day, I just honestly picked one at random because I was so flustered and they were like, Sophie, you're ready to go through. And I was like, I need to pick a lip color. I literally just picked one at random. I picked the shade Fun, which is what I wore in the TikTok. They don't have a smell, but the packaging is really cool, look. I'm gonna go for this one, which is called Talented. And shall I use the Talented lip liner as well? Oh, oh, thank God. Oh my God, they are twist up lip liners. That is my favorite thing ever because I can just chuck one in my handbag and I don't have to carry a sharpener around with me. So I'm gonna take the Talented lip liner. Kind of matches my lip color. Oh, they are so creamy. By the way, I do also have the REM Beauty new lip liners and the lip oils, and I will definitely be trying those soon. Fun lip liner actually looks really nice. It's like a brownish toned nude. Hang on, I'm gonna put a bit of fun. Interestingly, the lip liners smell a little bit sweet, but the lipsticks don't smell of anything. The formula of the lip liners, in my opinion, is kind of like the perfect lip liner formula. Cause it's matte, but it's not too matte where it like drags across your lips. It's creamy enough, but they do sort of like blend out. They don't sort of like get stuck. So your lips don't stick together, which is quite nice. Let's take the shade Talented for the lipstick. They just look like this. So even though it's a matte formula, it's sort of like a creamy matte, but they feel really comfortable on the lips. This color is stunning. I wish I'd put this one on when I did my TikTok with Selena. Probably should have put a bit of lip balm underneath it just because my lips were quite dry today and I didn't even put any lip balm on. But can you see how 
it's a nice sort of like smooth creamy formula but it's still matte at the same time i really like them and i'm i'm kind of tempted to keep all of them especially the lip liners because they're retractable so this is my makeup done what do you guys think i am actually really happy with how it turned out i think i've discovered some really nice new products here right everyone that is me done i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a thumbs up if you aren't subscribed to my vlog channel definitely go subscribe over there because in the next few days i'm going to be uploading my selena vlog i have i do have a vlog that i want to post first which is like a q a mcdonald's mukbang that i actually filmed about a month ago and just didn't upload and obviously if you want to see the tiktok or the instagram reels with selena go follow my instagram which is at sof and my tiktok is at sof does life i'm now off to have a zoom meeting and they're going to think i'm very extra for looking like this but i hope you guys are good and i will see you in my next video